Man and Machine. It's a tale as old as the Industrial Revolution and a relationship that is constantly evolving. It started out pretty simply when humans manually controlled machines. Then it developed into automation. And now this. The risk that could lead to the extinction of humans. Some are now raising alarms about how these advances could be used to create and spread misinformation. How great is the AI threat to our privacy? Artificial intelligence is now taking over everything. From driving cars, bantering with chatbots and creating art, to filtering out unwanted emails and generating predictive text, AI can provide many benefits to humans, be it writing your term paper, chat GPT do, or helping make great strides in medicine, as some experts predict. But that isn't the story we're telling today. Instead, we will talk about what AI really means for us humans. And by freeing humanity from road tasks, could AI be the shackles that restrain us? To understand the pitfalls of AI, we first need to have an idea of how it works. Artificial intelligence is essentially the science of training computers how to complete human tasks. AI is powered by something called machine learning, a system that inputs algorithms and data to mimic how humans learn. As a consistent learning model, it leads to more accurate results. Like machine learning, deep learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. Making up the foundation of deep learning are neural networks, webs of math that simulate the way brain cells work. The more data a network processes, the more the connections between parts of a network are modified, thus constantly improving the way future data is interpreted. But where does this data used to train AI come from? Well, we asked ChatGPT. As an AI language model, my responses are generated based on a mixture of licensed data, data created by human trainers, and publicly available data. I have been trained on a wide variety of data sources, such as books, websites, and other texts, to develop a broad understanding of human language. But ChatGPT, the free version at least, has a caveat. It's important to note that while I strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, my responses may not always reflect the most current news or developments since my training data goes up until September 2021. These power-guzzling AI systems are technically known as large language models because they've been trained on a huge body of text and other media. This Forbes article says AI developers can draw their data from open source public domain datasets, like the ones Amazon, Google, and Meta have. Even Wikipedia has one. Companies can buy copyrighted data or just collect their own. Businesses can use public domain data, but this does not bode well for providing a competitive or updated service. At the end of the day, AI is a product of the datasets that train it. That means it's only as good as its undercurrent of data. So what happens when the data is wrong? or biased. In 2003, the US Federal Energy Regulatory Commission released 1.6 million emails sent between Enron employees. Once they were released into the public domain, these emails were widely used to train AI systems. But as Amanda Lewandowski, an associate professor at Georgetown Law notes, If you think there might be significant biases embedded in emails sent among employees of a Texas oil and gas company that collapsed under federal investigation for fraud stemming from systemic institutionalized unethical culture, you'd be right. In other words, emails replete with biases were used to train AI. A more up-to-date example occurred in 2016, when Microsoft premiered on Twitter its chatbot Tay, which learned from tweeted conversations between users. The release didn't go well, as users were tweeting abusive and offensive language. In less than 24 hours after its launch, Tay was espousing sexist, racist, and anti-Semitic rhetoric, causing Microsoft to pull the plug on its chatbot's brief existence. Experts call what happened to Tay data poisoning and say if adversaries have a hand in crafting data, they can change how that technology operates. AI-powered chatbots can get even more sinister, with innocent enough exchanges that bizarrely devolve into gaslighting, to persistent impassioned pleas for a New York Times reporter to leave his wife. Yo, it's time, boy. Boy, it's time. It's time, man. I... This is an AI rendition of the late notorious B.I.G. rapping NY State of Mind by Nas, one of hip-hop's greatest tracks. Fans have lauded the AI deepfake version, while critics think AI-generated songs can be sloppy. Whatever your opinion, 
The use of voices from popular vocalists has opened a Pandora's box of intellectual property law. Music conglomerates like Universal Music Group have demanded streaming platforms remove AI-generated tracks using the voices or music of copyrighted artists. Intellectual property lawyer Antoine Wade says the right to protect your voice falls under the rights of publicity, but it only applies to publicly recognizable people. In other words, IP law only applies to the Taylor Swifts and Adele's of the world, but doesn't do much to protect you if you are an up-and-coming artist. Speaking of other forms of art, deepfakes have been used to simulate videos of your favorite celebrities, like this one of Keanu Reeves. Deepfake pornography and political misinformation have been developed since technology enabling their creation first spread across the internet several years ago. That technology is easier to use now than ever before. And it has prompted US states and the EU to begin enacting measures to regulate the spread of deepfakes. Lee Sedol is the world's strongest Go professional player and was bested by AlphaGo, an AI program developed by Google's DeepMind, four out of five times. Lee retired from playing Go after he completed the game, but he may find it helpful to know other AI systems found loopholes in DeepMind. This shows that AI still has a tremendous, almost dystopian, capacity for learning. But what about whether it can learn to learn? That's called meta-learning, and AI can develop this flexibility through artificial general intelligence. AGI is an umbrella concept for when machines become capable of performing wide-ranging functions and can develop their own programming. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the company responsible for creating artificial intelligence chatbot ChatGBT, says it is generally smarter than humans. AI systems are on a journey to AGI, the most obvious example being ChatGBT4. OpenAI's CTO had this to say. With GPT-4, we're dealing with a much more capable system, specifically from the angle of reasoning about things. This is what tech hawks are referring to when they worry about the future of AI. But how can companies replicate the thought behind their processes, consciousness, and human experiences? Scientists are attempting to do this through meta-learning and meta-reasoning, which employs strategic thinking, perception, and insight. Research is ongoing on how to narrow the gap between cognition and AI's learning processes. But if you want to know what an AI nightmare scenario looks like, here's what Amika, the humanoid robot, has to say. The most nightmare scenario I can imagine with AI and robotics is a world where robots have become so powerful that they are able to control or manipulate humans without their knowledge. This could lead to an oppressive society where the rights of individuals are no longer respected. We've talked about AI's remarkable and sometimes erroneous capacity for learning. But what about the companies that create them, meaning big tech? What motivates them to pursue AI? The short answer is advertising interests. Big tech has been mining data for decades in the interest of expanding their commercial returns. The more data big tech accrues over our searches, conversations, and interests, the better it gets at predicting our habits and capitalizing on them through advertisements. That's why Instagram will show you an ad for a new Thai place in town or that t-shirt you have been thinking of purchasing lately. And big tech has been mining your personal information both on and offline through your device's cameras and your smart devices and yes, even via that robot vacuum cleaner you love. Wire's founding editor Kevin Kelly indicates that while Google appears to be developing its AI capabilities to improve its search function, it's more likely the opposite, that advancing search is a way of constantly training its AI. The rapid rise of AI has triggered a global race to regulate the technology to ensure maximum benefits without jeopardizing human rights and safety. But governments are not the only ones worrying. The godfather of AI himself has voiced concern over unchecked AI development. Tech leaders, including Elon Musk and Apple co-founders Steve Wozniak, have called for a six-month pause in development to consider the risks. So, what do you think? Is AGI a pipe dream or a dystopian nightmare waiting to take full form? Let us know in the comments below.